So all of the directors were asked to present one big thing or one big idea. And I'm really pleased to present to you today uh, one of the big projects we're working on in the newly formed JBI Evidence-Based Healthcare Research Division, which is the Evidence Synthesis Taxonomy Initiative. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop a structured taxonomy which will help people make the right decisions and use the right methods for their various approaches to evidence synthesis. And I'm going to talk through this for about 10 minutes, uh, and then hopefully we can have some questions either on this project or uh, about the report that was submitted as well. So a little bit more uh, about me, here are my interests and some of my disclosures. So I am the new director of our Evidence-Based Healthcare Research Division, uh, which uh, was established at the start of this year. I'm also the director of the JBI Adelaide Grade Centre and a member of a working group. And as Zoe mentioned, we work closely with a lot of uh, cognate groups and I'm currently the chair of the Guidelines International Network as well. The project that I'm going to be talking about today, the Evidence Synthesis Taxonomy Initiative, is uh, it's, it's been made possible through some funding from the National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia uh, and a, an investigator grant. And if you want to ask me any questions at any stage, uh, you can see my email uh, there as well. Okay, so this is what I'm going to quickly talk about. I know I won't need to uh, 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 stress the importance of evidence synthesis too much to you all, uh, because we're all like-minded individuals on this call. Uh, and I'll be getting into the different types of evidence synthesis, uh, the actual evidence synthesis taxonomy initiative, and then where we're up to with this work so far. So what is evidence synthesis? Well, it's actually, it was actually quite an interesting exercise to go through and look at the various definitions for evidence synthesis and to actually find that there, there, there aren't a lot of good definitions for it, at least from, from our perspective. Uh, and maybe it's something that um, JBI might want to put forward our official definition of evidence synthesis in, in the future. But what I thought, or, or what we thought was one of the nicest definitions for evidence synthesis is this one here from Evidence Synthesis International, where they're talking about evidence synthesis as the interpretation of individual studies within the context of global knowledge for a given topic. Uh, and they go on to stress that evidence syntheses can be uh, the basic unit of knowledge uh, used in tools such as a policy brief or clinical practice guidelines. So evidence syntheses can inform policy and practice, which we all, all know about. In the second paragraph, uh, the actual methods and the importance of using rigorous and transparent approaches are highlighted. And I think this is perhaps, perhaps the most comprehensive and, and one of the best definitions for evidence synthesis at the moment. Now, evidence synthesis is a growing field and there's a lot of new approaches. And as a field has grown, we've also encountered a number of issues and challenges in evidence synthesis. For example, we're starting to see uh, a, a, just a large amount of these evidence syntheses being conducted. And sometimes these are, um, obviously this is, this is fantastic that there are a lot of uh, systematic reviews and evidence syntheses being conducted to obviously underpin uh, with trustworthy guidelines and to inform policy and practice. But some of the issues that we're seeing is that there is actually a lot of duplication or what we might call redundant reviews. And as Zoe mentioned when she highlighted uh, the recommendations from the, the report um, from the commission, uh, we're seeing that there isn't a lot of uh, uh, cross collaboration between groups. There isn't a lot of sharing and working together. And if we did this, we could reduce a lot of research waste and duplication that we are seeing in this field. The other problem is that a lot of the reviews that are being published are actually of very poor quality or poorly reported. Um, so, so even though uh, uh, people may be putting a lot of effort into these projects, at the end of the day, they're so poorly done or it's just so hard to figure out what they've actually done um, that they're not actually uh, uh, usable um, uh, 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 in practice. So a lot of these reviews are poor quality or poor reported. And due to this and a number of other reasons, uh, they're not having having actually any impact on practice. Another thing that we are, are seeing quite a bit as well at JBI is that sometimes it's, it can be really hard to, fig to figure out and determine what approach or what methods are best for your actual question. 
and we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of um, a lot of authors uh, choose methods and systematic review approaches or evidence synthesis approaches, should I say, that are probably not the best approach for them. Uh, a, a classic example is the number of scoping reviews that we see that are trying to answer questions of uh, regarding the effectiveness of interventions, uh, for example. So there's a lot of challenges, I think, in the field of evidence synthesis that obviously JBI as an organisation are in a good place to try to resolve. And the other thing that we've been seeing is obviously this evolution of evidence synthesis over the last 10, 20, 30 years, where we're starting to see a lot more methods uh, that emerge. And, and this is a bit of a double-edged sword, although it's great that we now have different methods and approaches and techniques to answer really all of the questions that we see in healthcare, um, clinical and public health. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of confusion in the field in terms of, well, what actual approach should we choose? Uh, and you can see a lot of different people have actually started writing about, um, about this evolving evidence synthesis family. Now, when we talk, when we look uh, perhaps at a subset of this family or one of the branches of this family in terms of systematic reviews, we can also see that there is a large number of systematic reviews that we could actually conduct. And this is certainly growing. And if we look at other branches uh, or even subsets of a particular um, uh, a family with, uh, within systematic reviews, we can see that even in, say, prognostic reviews, there's actually four different types of prognostic systematic reviews, looking at overall prognosis, prognostic factors, prognostic models, and treatment selection factors um, or models. And this might be able, be able to be applied to other types of reviews as well, such as scoping reviews, where there might actually be, a, let's say, a subtypology of scoping reviews as well for the different indications or purposes or questions that you're trying to answer. And like I said, this has led uh, once again to a, a lot of confusion uh, in the field about what approaches to, to use. And we see this uh, uh, very commonly during uh, our training programs, um, through our work as editors or peer reviewers, and through our communication with potential systematic review authors as well. And uh, the evidence synthesis taxonomy is a project where we're trying to address and reduce this confusion. Another really useful tool which can help uh, make the decision or inform the decision about what evidence synthesis approach is right for you is a what review is right for you tool. And this has been developed by Andrea Trico and, and, and colleagues. And this is a really great starting point for people who, who may not be clear on what actual approach to choose um, they can actually go into this tool and be guided with a series of questions. Uh, and it's kind of like an algorithm that will then suggest the most appropriate review type for you. And we're, we're hoping to work very close, closely together with this group um, uh, uh, on choosing the right, right review uh, using this tool and obviously hopefully um, being informed by the evidence of this taxonomy initiative as well. So, as this enthusiasm, let's say, for evidence synthesis continues, and we are seeing, uh, I think we've got perhaps a once in a lifetime chance now at the moment, because there's never been such a, a big focus on actually using evidence to inform decision making. And there is actually this, this burgeoning enthusiasm uh, and awareness of the need for actual, actual evidence synthesis. And as this, uh, as this is occurring, we need to make sure that there are measures in place to ensure to allow people to make the best choices for them in terms of the design and conduct of their evidence synthesis approaches. We also want to make sure that we're producing these reviews as efficiently and accurately as possible. Uh, and once again, using the right techniques for the right questions. And that all of these reviews are going to have trustworthy results, which can actually underpin evidence-based recommendations, policy and practice. Therefore, what we want is a resource that actually guides and drives appropriate synthesis approaches. Uh, and, and as such, we are proposing this research-informed evidence synthesis taxonomy. Now, we're not the, not the only ones um, who, have thought we, who, who have thought that we actually need a taxonomy or, or to guide um, evidence synthesis. And um, there's some really, as, as we always are, we're standing on the shoulders of giants and previous work and 
science is a cumulative effort, of course. And there are some really uh, useful resources where people have tried to address this problem in the past. And I'm glad to say um, people like Andrea and um, Andrew Booth and some others are actually um, uh, key collaborators as part of this as part of this initiative. Some of the issues with some of these these previous um, uh, 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 previous typologies or taxonomies or classification systems is that they were, uh, I guess, one off. Um, uh, uh, typologies or classification systems, and they haven't been continuous, continuously updated. And as we know, evidence synthesis is a grow, growing and, and evolving uh, methodological field. So what we actually need is a living evidence synthesis taxonomy, and that's what we're actually trying to do uh, with this work. We want, we con we're conceptualising this as uh, kind of like a living uh, uh, wiki where we can continuously update and categorise new uh, review approaches as they emerge. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's really interesting because um, um, uh, the authors quoted here actually said that it's probably going to be Im almost impossible <laughs> to do this work uh, because the rate of development of new approaches is just too fast. And there is also a lot of overlap uh, in these approaches. Um, but, you know, perhaps it's optimism bias, but we believe that if we do develop this as a living resource, uh, we are actually going to be able to solve this issue, particularly if we are collaborating with, with lots of different groups and people um, uh, uh, and people who are experts in evidence synthesis, um, that will be able to clarify the differences between these different review designs, where there is overlap, where there should be overlap, and perhaps where there shouldn't be overlap as well. And once again, just trying to help people make the best decisions they can. And this really neatly aligns to, I guess, some of the recommendations from the, um, the, the Commission on, on Evidence for Societal Challenges. Uh, but also this position statement from Evidence Synthesis, Synthesis International, where they actually uh, uh, made a call to action that we should develop and share standards uh, across the evidence synthesis community to help guide, monitor, and raise expectations for quality and relevance of procedures and methods for evidence synthesis. And really to make sure that we are um, using the same or very similar terminology so that we are all speaking um, the same language and not just having so many different, different groups or offshoots of different approaches and different types when perhaps um, there's actually methods that are already there, that are available, that are, that are robust, that we should be considering. So I think this work uh, fits, fits really neatly with this um, call to action as well. So what are our goals? We want to develop, evaluate, and continuously update and refine this evidence synthesis taxonomy resource. And this will be a, a comprehensive resource for anyone who is interested in doing a, a review or an evidence synthesis approach, uh, that they'll be able to find, hopefully, the right review for them, uh, be linked out to appropriate uh, guidance, appropriate tools, appropriate softwares, software, appropriate analytical techniques, uh, training programs, et cetera. So that it's going to be hopefully the sort of one-stop shop where they'll be able to then link out to the appropriate approach and the resources they'll need to be able to conduct their review. Our, our aim and at the heart of what we're trying to do is to support researchers to make good methodological choices and to improve uh, the conduct of reviews and reduce some of this confusion. What is this eventually going to look like? Well, we don't know yet. We're doing a lot of a preparatory work right now, but to help perhaps picture what this could look like, once again, it will be uh, like a living wiki type page where perhaps we have evidence synthesis uh, as, as the overarching kingdom uh, within this uh, taxonomy. And then underneath that, we could have a number of domains for different uh, evidence synthesis approaches or different families, perhaps. And systematic reviews could be one of those domains. Maybe we'll have qualitative evidence synthesis and others as well. Within uh, systematic reviews, we've talked about how many different types of systematic reviews there are. JBI support um, you know, 10, 10 plus types ourselves. And then underneath each of the individual systematic review types, there may be these subtypes uh, of review approaches. 
And yes, we acknowledge there is going to be overlap um, between some particular types of reviews and review, review approaches. And we'll, we'll figure out, or we, we, we have some ideas about how we can actually highlight uh, where the areas of overlap are. And then underneath each individual review type, uh, we'll be able to uh, hopefully identify um, the different methodological guidance. And this isn't about necessarily saying this, this methodological guidance is better than another group's methodological guidance, but it's just about actually signposting that methodological guidance and the software, the standards, um, and perhaps a grade approaches as well. And then even perhaps going into the level of analytical techniques also. So where are we at? Well, uh, we have uh, we have a large international advisory panel, which is a, a diverse and multidisciplinary group um, from across the globe who are helping us uh, with this work and we'll be engaging with them a lot throughout uh, the next uh, four or five years. Uh, we've done some presentations on this work uh, at some conferences uh, and we're continuing to uh, promote and disseminate this work. Our first step is a scoping review of previous evidence synthesis uh, taxonomies and classification systems so that we can use this to hopefully build this new living comprehensive framework. And obviously that's going to be a very collaborative um, and inclusive effort. We're drafting some papers on a need for this work and perhaps a call to action to, to focus on this. And we're also uh, collaborating with, with other groups and similar initiatives, such as the, the What Review is Right For You tool. And we're building all of our infrastructure. So it's a really exciting stage of a project. It's early days, um, but we are really uh, getting up and running with this work. And I really hope to keep you um, all up to date uh, as we do continue to progress. So, um, just in conclusion, we've seen a lot of different evidence synthesis approaches uh, 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 in recent years, and we're almost overwhelmed by how many systematic reviews, et cetera, are being published. A lot of these are unfortunately of low quality and um, duplicate work and uh, uh, contributing to research waste. There is this confusion and we're hoping to solve this conflict confusion because we have no up-to-date standard classification scheme that is internationally agreed to and as such all of this is is driving to us hoping to build this evidence synthesis taxonomy which will be this living repository and compendium identifying different approaches methods and guidance for evidence synthesis all with the aim at the heart of it to make sure people are doing the right reviews for the right reasons using the right methods mm -hmm.